Good morning, everybody. Here we are. We have this great opportunity to get our day kicked off right with the best thing that there is, and that is a dose of God's Word. This morning, I want us to look at a passage over in Paul's letter to Timothy in the first Timothy. There's a parallel account of this over in Titus, the first chapter. He's talking about um, elders. And uh, what we find here in first Timothy chapter three and in verse one, he says, this is the faithful saying. If a man desires a position of a bishop, he desires a good work. Now, one must do a little bit of study to understand what this term means. Here in the uh, New King James Version, he uses the term bishop. Now, this word bishop um, is not a singular um, office in and of itself, but it is really a term that is used to describe the work that is to be done. There are several terms that um, relate to this same office. It could be bishop, it could be elder, it could be presbyter, it could be overseer, uh, it could be shepherd, um, it could be pastor, okay? Um, all of these terms, that's why I say you've got to do some study, and you'll see the Bible uses these, their descriptive terms that describe the same work. And I want to spend a few moments this morning and maybe a couple times during this week um, looking at this concept of elders or pastors and, and the like. But I, for right now, I want us to kind of look at this here in first verse. As with everything, we have to go back to the Bible. We see so much in the religious world. We see uh, we see uh, senior pastors and junior pastors and youth pastors and music pastors and, you know, female pastors. And we see this whole conglomeration of terms that how this word is used very loosely and really unscripturally. Uh, when you study the Bible, you're going to find that this office of pastors or elders, uh, shepherds, overseer, they're all the same office, just Different terms to describe the work that takes place in withholding that office. We see in Acts 20, and um, where Paul calls for, Acts 20 verse 17, where he calls the Ephesian elders, or Ephesian pastors, because um, he wanted to have a discussion with them while he was in, while he was in the area. But what we find here is it's always a plurality. There's not a chief pastor, not a senior pastor, not any of these uh, designate, which puts one above the other. You just can't find it anywhere in the Bible. But notice what he says. He says, if a man, now this may begin to get on some toes of some folks, but if the Bible is true, and if we believe the Bible is true, then it says what it says, whether we agree with it or whether we like it or we don't like it. it says a man, not a woman. I know there's, I know the mainstream. I, I know the, the the common pulse in the religious world is that women can be pastors, women can be elders, women can be bishops. Well, men may say so, but what does the Bible say? Is the Bible our standard or is it not our standard? The Bible says a man desires the position of a bishop or a pastor or an overseer or a shepherd. So what we see here is according to the Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, that a female cannot take this title or perform in this function in the church. It says what it says. You old people will say, well, Paul's a chauvinist. Well, you can say what you want, but it still doesn't change the fact of what the Holy Spirit said. It says, if a man, and he must be a married man in order to be a pastor or an elder or a shepherd or overseer. Well, we go on in the same text. It says in verse 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. He's got to be married. We find another thing, verse 4. Who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. See, the religious world has come to this idea that you can go online, you can take this court, and bada boom, bada bang, you're a pastor. There's no Bible for that. Or you can go to some Bible college. You can be a pastor. Single guy can be a pastor. Somebody that's 20 years old, ain't, ain't has not is not married, does not have any kids 
cannot demonstrate how he rules his house. He can't be a pastor. He cannot be an elder. That's just simply what the Bible is saying. And I know that is contrary to what so many believe um, in the religious world. But they're wrong. Those that put forth those things are just wrong. Why? Because the Bible says something else. The Bible says that a pastor, an elder, a bishop must be a man. And that man must be married. And he must be married and he must have faithful children. And these demonstrate his ability and his wisdom, his maturity as a Christian of how he rules or manages his household. Why? Because that's how he'll manage and rule the church along with the other fellow elders or pastors or bishops and so on. Again, and there's not a hierarchy. They're all equal. None has more authority than the other. They're all equal. Just like Jesus told his father, said, uh, the Gentiles lord it over them. He says, not so with you. You're going to be an equal. There is no one that has more authority in the church than anyone else. But hey, I'm going to leave you with that. I, I, I'm going to leave you with that to chew on. And remember this, 1 Timothy chapter 3. A pastor's got to be a man. He's got to be a married man. And he's got to be a man that has faithful children. We'll talk about some of those other things tomorrow. But nonetheless, there's your dose of God's Word. I hope it'll get you wheel spinning. And I hope it'll get you in your Bibles to study this thing out and understand exactly what the Bible says. Hey, hope you have a great day, Lord willing. Tomorrow we'll get back with another dose of God's Word.